Spokesperson for a few charities, Marnie Kennedy. Hello, <laughs> thanks for having me. Thank guys. you for coming on. Thank you so much for coming in. I mean, you've been so busy lately. I mean, it's hard to to not see your face all over from my <laughs> club, you know. Yes, we just had our finale a couple of weeks ago now, I guess. So it'll all start cooling off now, now that that's all wrapped up. But and what's the response been like? Been I watched the show myself, it's amazing. Oh, thank you. Yeah. appreciate it. Yeah, I, I was really, really, really surprised by a way of with the finale episode, um, all the, the messages that came back that were just asking for a second season, so um, I'm not sure how that's going to go with, with Channel 9 and all that sort of stuff, but it, it was, regardless of the outcome going forward, it was so lovely, you know, it's, it's so hard, yeah. you know, when you do something creative, you put so much of yourself into something and then you're so at the mercy of people's response. Um, so I was very, very grateful to get such lovely feedback, so nice. that meant a lot. Well, so I think it's only fitting coming off um, you know, the last year and a half that you've had as far as, you know, hoax and then you had, you know, Jack Kinch. Yes, I was so also. we met, yeah. <laughs> And then uh, you, you've had Wentworth as well, which is quite a gritty, you know, gritty yeah, show. Yeah. And then, um, from, from what I recall, you've got something else coming out now, or was that... That was my club, so... Right. Oh, sorry. Sorry, uh, Wanted was a, a quick little guesty with um, right. Beth Gibney. Fantastic, yeah, yeah which, who's also shot with in public. Yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly. So, yeah, well, yeah, that only released last week, I think, the first episode was. So, yeah, yeah I'm a little bit <laughs> <laughs> all over the oh. place. Tomorrow. It is yeah. funny, though, because, you know, you, you and I uh, had a conversation prior to this mm -hmm. about how at this year's Logies you were shortlisted in the uh, Best New Talent category. Yeah, I was, I was. Interesting considering you have <laughs> such a prolific, you know, profile going going back to your childhood. I copped a lot of flack for that actually. Yeah. <laughs> All my mates were like, this is rubbish. And I was like, just be cool, be cool. <laughs> um, in a way, it's so funny. Like when I, when I did get the well, shortlisted yeah. for the nomination, it was funny because in a way, it was, it's sort of true, like I, I went off the grid for so long um, and as an adult this was definitely, because uh, uh, I was nominated for uh, Janet and Hose, which mm -hmm. was my sort of, I guess, debut in a, in a weird way as, an, as a, a, an adult, as a woman. Um, the last job that I did, I was 17, I was still a girl um, and having grown up on, on, you know, on set as a kid, you, you really are a different person and, yeah. and the content obviously is, is so completely different. So. It was a bit of a cop out, I like, will admit, and I was like, oh. Um, but then, yeah, in a way, it kind of was a little bit of a, a newcomer sort of thing, because no one knew who I was. Coming, you know, obviously yeah. you get the old fans who watch yeah. the, the kids shows and stuff like that. But from a from a you know professional point of view, it was definitely um, it was definitely a, a re um, entry into the <laughs> industry. So it was nice. It's interesting because you say no one, you know, obviously as far as TV audiences go, maybe you know there's a, there's a different um, demographic now, mm -hmm. uh, but it's it's pretty hard for people to not know you. You've got such a wide spanning following on Especially. social media. <laughs> yeah, I think that's just that I, I'm so indebted to to Mortify the first show I ever did. Yeah. I think a lot of the followers come from nostalgic teenagers or, or even um, young adults who was, you know I get so many lovely mm -hmm. messages. And it's funny, we live in the world of Netflix and stuff like that. So originally Mortified aired on Channel 9, then it went over to ABC, Disney, and now Netflix, which didn't exist when we were filming it. So it's, it is, you know, it's, it's so bizarre, but it is nice to sort of see it, you know, go yeah. through different generations. And I think that's where that comes from. But yeah, it's, it's nice to be a part of, um, you know, a lot of people sort of say that it was a part of their upbringing. So it's, it's a testament to, um, to the show's creator, Angela Weber. Uh -huh. um, she actually sadly passed away a year after we filmed. Sorry, um, yeah. yeah, she's a beautiful woman. Um, so it's that's my favourite part of getting yeah. any messages or you know, followers or anything like that is the people who are like, oh, I'm not quite as nice. <laughs> nice little legacy for Angela to have left behind. So, so I mean, there's, been a, there's been a big gap transition period. I, mean, yes. I, I know you've spoken publicly in the past yeah, about yeah. not knowing whether to come back or not. Definitely. I mean, yeah. can you share a little bit about yeah, that? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. It's something I talk about. Uh, a lot. Um, I'm about to travel with um, Girls Who Glow, which mm. is a workshop for young girls, and I speak a lot about that, and that's sort of the basis of my talk. Yeah. Um, 
So basically what happened, I, I grew up on set, I started out as an 11 year old, um, all mortified, and then sort of worked consistently for, uh, until I was 17, 18. Mm. Every year I was going away for six months at a time, filming shows. Um, so it was a very defining part of who I was. And then um, when I was 17, I, I shot a, a TV show which coincided with year 12, mm. um, and I burnt myself out very badly. Um, I wasn't looking after my mental health. I would, it was just one of those classic situations where I was taking on too much. Yeah. Um, and it was so within my personality, you know. <laughs> and looking back, I'm very grateful for the opportunity um, of filming that TV show. I came away with some beautiful friends and um, some incredible memories, but it w was an experience that had a detrimental effect. Yeah. I, I watched it back and I didn't recognize myself. You know, I, I was going through such a stressful time. It's like, it's like cell memory. You know, when you see a photo and you remember a time, you're yeah. like, oh, and I had this whole series, um, and I, I suddenly saw myself as the, a, a, a woman on screen, and yeah. I grow, and mm. it was that's a really interesting transition to make. Um, so, what was the gap? How long did you take a bit of time? It was a long time. So basically, yeah. after I finished shooting that, and I finished year twelve, and I was all very proud of how everything wrapped up. I decided to have a gap year, mm. so I went away to Fiji and I did a volunteer program for a month there when I was eighteen. Um, then travelled Europe for three or four months with my best friend, and then went to India. <laughs> so it was a massive <laughs> travel year, it was, and it was amazing yeah. for perspective and and all that sort of thing. And by the end of it, I sort of was like, okay, I'm ready. Like I'm ready to do the whole LA thing, which mm. you know, my my agents over there had been waiting for me to finish, you know, shooting, yeah. and finish school in Australia, and that was sort of like the perfect well, time. Was, yeah, that's mm. it. Uh, but I had failed to do the work that you know the trauma from that show had caused. Yeah. Um, and trauma sounds like such an inflammatory word because it was a great experience, but it's it was relative to me. Like it was a traumatic experience by way of there were a lot of things that I didn't deal with. Um, so did the gap, the gap year enable you to the gap reflect year, on all this and, well, and work on yourself? So I thought on a conscious yeah. level, definitely. Yeah. Subconsciously, I hadn't addressed a lot of stuff. And, mm. and beyond that, like I hadn't had time to decompress beyond, beyond that job and beyond mm. year 12. It was like a bunch of stuff that I hadn't worked through. You know, it, it's a weird trajectory to grow up on set and, yeah. and then come back to high school. And there was just so, so much stuff that I hadn't worked through. Um, so 19 to <clears throat> 22, I guess, when I moved to Sydney. 19 to 22, that's almost, what, three, it was three or four years of not working. Well. Wow. And I was self-sabotaging. Like, I had every yeah. opportunity. I was auditioning and... That's, <laughs> it's funny you say that because I was just, there was an interview that you did with TV Week, um, I think up close, as part of the launch for Bite Club. Sure, sure, yeah. And one of the quotes that I noticed, and, and this isn't a direct quote, but I, you kind of gestured towards the fact that at one point you were wearing baggy t-shirts oh, going yeah. in and yeah. you would, because you, cause you just, you know, I think you yourself believed this isn't going to happen, yeah. so I'm just going to show them that. It's going to make it easier for them to make their decision. Right. They wanted a little blonde thing to walk in and do the thing and I could sort of fit that category, but that mm. wasn't who I was and it wasn't who I was comfortable being. And so I had this idea of, you know, and again, as I was talking about conscious and subconscious, yeah. consciously, I flew myself over there, I put myself up, it was all of my own accord, and it's something that I actively wanted. Yeah. It wasn't something I was doing for anyone else. But, and yet still, I was self-sabotaging, because I just didn't feel, I didn't have that confidence, I didn't believe in myself, and yeah. so I was trying to do all these little things. And it's so funny how you convince yourself, you know, in our industry, it's, it's very, you know, there's a lot of things that aren't within our control. Mm. It's very easy to use that as an excuse. Yeah. There are a lot of things that are within your control, including getting your mental health in mm. check and, and, and speaking about your experiences. And I just wasn't doing that at all. And so it, it was a very interesting time. It took me a very long time to yeah. come back to myself. Would you say that the crescendo was, again, as you mentioned in this interview, when your agent, I believe, and your mother sat you down and had quite like an intervention? Yes, so basically, what happened is um, I went to India when I was 18 during right. that gap year, mm. but when I was 21, at the peak, the crescendo, as you mm. said, at the peak of my dark times, I guess, I, um, for my 21st birthday, I decided to go back to India in Sri Lanka, which again, I was like, this is fine, this is great. Um, I hadn't worked for however, however long, and I, um, I failed to tell my agent that I was going for a month over pilot season. 
<laughs> um, and it wasn't until I got back that mum and I went out for breakfast. <clears throat> um, and mum sort of looked at me and she was like, Catherine called me, my agent. Um, and that wasn't usual. Like when I was a little girl, obviously mum and Catherine dealt a lot with each other. And, mm-hmm. and mum has known Catherine since I was 12. Yeah. But they'd never had that sort of thing in recent years anyway. Um, so I sort of got all defensive and I was sitting there and I was, you know, it was such an interesting time and mum just was really soft with me and just said, we're, we're worried about you. Catherine's worried about you. I just burst into tears in the, in the middle of this Melbourne cafe. Mm. And I was so heartbroken. I really was. I was so heartbroken that, you know, I, I, I couldn't even believe in myself. And then the two people who, you know, had believed in me for so long, suddenly I was feeling like they didn't. And it was such a, a weird thing to come to terms with the fact that they were actually the two people who believed in me the most. And they were just in a position to be able to call me out on that because they cared the most. And mm. it, they were right. Like, why did I go to India? Why did I not tell anyone that, I, you know, mm. it was just, I was running away and, and they were really concerned. And it took them and, and my agent, I'm so indebted to her. Um, for sort of, she was one of the people in the wake of that conversation. We sat down and had a meeting, I think the following week. And she said, point blank, she said, is this what you want to do? Wow. And no one had asked me that, really. No one, I hadn't even really asked myself properly. Yeah, you started so young, so. How can, you know, yeah. it was always such a positive yeah. part of my upbringing. And yeah. It became so defining, but it wasn't something I, it was just something, who, it was always a part of me. But yeah. Mm. I never made the decision as an adult. No one in their right mind would choose to be an actor. <laughs> yeah. like, well, was, yeah. My God, I, like, I was a pretty bright kid at school. Like, I could have done a bunch of different things but if I could do anything else I would but it was just where my passion lied and I remember being so devastated again and just being like of course it's what I want to do if I could do mm-hmm. anything else I would um, so was that the turning point then really after that was. conversation it really was because it made me go all right well I'm going to try I did a screenwriting course I, I you know decided maybe I'd, I'd be a director and I'd be behind the camera and mm-hmm. that would solve all my problems but I just kept, kept coming back to it. I actually remember Dad, I didn't mention that in the TV week thing, but I remember coming downstairs one day, this is back when I was in Melbourne, and I was like, Dad, I figured it out, I'm gonna be a director, I'm gonna, <laughs> and he was like, yeah, I'm sure you will be, you're not done that to me yet. <laughs> and I was so angry at him, I was like, my, no, I've got the whole thing. Like, and he's like, Mom, it's, I mean, yes, I support anything, but you're not done. And I was like, but do you think in that in that moment where your agent and your mum pulled yeah. you up on it and you actually broke down? Yes. Do you think that was some kind of release for you? Like in relation to the campaign a little bit, like we're trying to Oh my god. We're seeking people to get more awareness, but people so much suffer in silence. So do you think during all that transitional period you were suffering in silence and didn't wanna oh my god. admit to yourself as 100%. well as let anyone else know? 100 percent When something is so such a defining part of who you are mm. and then suddenly it's got a negative connotation that's really hard because then suddenly you're looking at yourself negatively yeah. by default and it wasn't until you know i was so good god i'm an actress like mm. I, I was so good at making she sure could hide it. i thought they would but yeah. your mum knows and the people yeah. who know yeah. you know of course they knew but it's such a delicate thing because you're you know you're so protective of, yeah. of that sort of facade facade but it, it is so important, and I'm such a testament to that by way of just, you know, and, and even on the other side of things, if you if you are worried about someone, yeah. or it, it it might in the short term offend them, it might you yeah. know get an angry reaction, or, yeah. But it passes because then there's the relief. I, I'll never well, ever. That's what I mean. Yeah. Did you if if you go back right to that moment that they said it and you just relief. broke it down? Did it just like feel? It just washed away, and yeah. there was a lot of work to be done. Yeah. There was a lot of work to be done, and that was only the very beginning of my journey. Yeah. I, I had to have a few breakdowns mm. to you know then discover I needed to go to therapy, and mm. I had a vitamin D deficiency. There's so many things that we yeah. have to address medically, so, you know, psychologically. Your relationships, um, friendships, everything, your living environment. There's so many things, but it takes that one conversation. And that's the thing that I'm, you know, I'm such an advocate for just having the courage to strive for that conversation. But it goes back to, it's so funny, when we were speaking to Paul DeGilda last week, Mm -hmm. you say you you got tested, you had a vitamin D deficiency. Paul had the sleep. Yeah, the sleep. Yeah. Yeah. 
And he, he couldn't explain more to people to actually go and get tested. Well, that's where I was about to say. So yeah. we, we, this is what I love about the campaign. Yeah. Right? We often hear about this cliche of someone, you know, oh, the demons, they're demons, you know, they yeah. deal with the demons, right? What I think is great about this campaign is that we're actually saying, okay, right, let's take a closer look at the demons. Let's yeah. take a closer look at what's going on. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I think one thing that I've noticed specifically with you, I mean, you mentioned, you know, that kind of impatience, you know, of, of wanting to, I want to fix this, I want to find out, you know, what I can do or, or where I'm going to go next. Mm -hmm. So as far as exercising your demons, I think one thing that I've seen you do is that letting go series on Instagram. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Can you tell us a bit about that experience? Yeah, that was, that was incredible. Uh, that was uh, last year, which is bizarre. It feels like a lifetime ago, but that came at such a, a pivotal time in my life by way of, it's so funny when you do the work and you, that was such a reward. Yeah. I think it, um, in a personal way, I look back on that as such a reward. It's such a challenge. Um, but it was after I, I'd sorted everything out. I'd moved to Sydney. I, I you know, I was working. I mm -hmm. found myself. Mm -hmm. I found myself again. And then suddenly, just when you think you've got it all figured out, yeah. you get a call from one of your best mates going, Are "You afraid of heights?" <laughs> that jumping out of a plane, and, and not to say that everyone needs to do that. <laughs> um, definitely not. My parents <laughs> have a few things to say about that, but um, it's not even about that by way of. Yes, for me, jumping out of the plane was the most... My life changed the instant I stepped out of that door. And it is a bit of a metaphor, you know, to let go and, yeah. you know. But after 18 jumps, it... I remember walking into audition rooms and being like, if I didn't get this, I still jumped out of the plane. Yeah. Like, you know, it just puts things into perspective by way of fear and our comprehension of... And just as a, you know, five foot four blonde girl, to be able to get from door to floor completely myself, it put everything into perspective by way yeah. of what I'm capable of and what anyone is capable of. And it also reminds you of what matters. Because when you're, your brain literally does this thing when you're, you're that first few seconds of, of getting out of that door for the first time, or even a few times after, mm. your brain thinks you're going to die. So mm. it releases this whole thing of like, <laughs> I had, it was like yeah. a, yeah. the closest to a near death experience by way of how yeah. your brain registers it. And suddenly I was going through all the people I love. It, it was Seriously? Just that. Yeah. To the point where I was like saying names out loud. I was like, Mum, Dad, Tara, Greg, going through my whole family, friends. <laughs> and I got to the ground and I was like, right, I think I know what matters now. And it just, everything else. And again, like I, I live a normal life now, but yeah. like, you know, normal things creep in and reality kicks in. You can't live in that state all yeah. the time. But man, that was such a turning point in mm. way of what I was capable of. I, I, you know, never in my... Never in my wildest dreams. If you had told me a year before that that I'd be jumping out of a plane completely solo and surviving, mm. I would have told you where to go. <laughs> There's no way, no. but it, it was... So a, now you can take on the world. Well, we'll see. <laughs> it was a good lesson in, you know, exceeding your own expectations of yourself and, and pushing past boundaries and what it gives you and such a gift, you know, when you do that. And but you have though, you've come, you've come back with a vengeance, like Fight <laughs> Club, your character, like what drew you to the character? Oh, that was... Like some um, strong scenes, like yeah. tested your um, yeah, yeah, vulnerability yeah. and emotion, yeah, like yeah, yeah. Yeah. It just was to see a diverse side, obviously, of your character, because yeah. we're all known to see you grow up. Yeah, 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 like, it was, it was um, I mean, it was definitely the hardest I've ever been pushed, and it was such a testament to, to Don on my hand, who, who I got to work with for those scenes in particular. I, um, Amber, the character I played, was probably the first character in a long time that I brought a lot of myself to, mm. um, which was really freeing as well, you know, to sort of figure that out, like, just by way of an acting perspective, yeah. it was really nice to be like, okay, let, let's see what that, this feels like, bringing more of yourself, and it costs you a little bit more when you bring more of yourself in, yeah. but it's so, um, it's so rewarding, and those scenes were, you know, we really got to explore some, some dark territory in a really safe environment, but... It, it was, again, like by way of pushing boundaries, it, it helped me sort of step into a new phase of my career by way of, I always had this idea of, of my limits and what yeah. I could do, and exploring those scenes, I was sort of, and it was a testament to the director as well, to sort of, he let me sort of find that, and he could see a good thing happening, he yeah. was like, all right, like just keep, and it was just a patience thing, and I think that, I now apply that to most aspects of my life, by way of, you give it a little bit of time, give mm. it a bit of breathing space, 
you know, beautiful things can come from it. But one thing I'll put to both of you being actors, it's so funny, I've worked with so many actors and so many things, and especially through this campaign. And so I was on Today Show with Manny, mm. like she <laughs> held my hand literally, because I was nervous, <laughs> we <were both> <laughs> doing my affirmations. I have the positive. <laughs> <laughs> for, yeah. But um, yeah, one thing that they did ask me was like, if, if any stood out, mm. I mean, like I said, I was grateful for everyone coming on board, but to put it to you actors, what I always find so fascinating, like I've watched you on Bike Club and Julian working with you, is you can always, my thing, when I've got the eye and I see, you can always tell when someone's got a story mm -hmm. and it comes from somewhere. Mm -hmm. And when you watch shows like Bike Club and I saw you in it, mm -hmm. you could tell you got a story. Mm -hmm. Like there's actors and then there's actors to me. It's almost like method actor, when people can really get into a character but you can see it in their eyes. And I think that's, I always get asked on these support, how did you get the guys doing mm. what they're doing? Mm. Just let you guys do your thing. That's exactly Because that's, that's pretty much money went around the corner for five minutes. I really did. <laughs> like, I'll be right, I'll like, go, oh, just uh, give me a minute. <laughs> yeah, and Julian faced the wall. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it's but, a weird But thing. that's the thing, it's in your eyes. Like, yeah. to me, as a creative, what I see in your eyes, mm. You but can tell and it just brings out so much in a picture. But you only get that insight when a safe environment has been created. And that's a testament to you. Exactly. That as a photographer, yeah. That yeah. you can cultivate that sort of a, you know, because like, yes. you're not instructed, well, I can speak for myself, mm. but yeah. you didn't tell me to do anything. You just, and that sort <laughs> yeah. of ties in with what this whole campaign is about, by yeah. way of giving the person space. You're not sort of feeding them with like, this is maybe how you feel, or maybe, maybe this sentence. Mm. It's such a, that's what this campaign is, yeah. you know, about giving people the time to sort of come to terms with their own stuff in their own time, but just being there. Yeah. That's yeah. literally, you know, you, you are this campaign in a, a weird way. It's yeah. a process but of they're not, the, the people aren't lying. No, exactly, yeah. exactly. And to be vulnerable, you know, we were, once we got those photos, I was happiest when we were able to go all the way there. Yeah. When I was like, no, there's more that I've got to give. Mm. And, and then we got the shot. That, that sums up what this campaign is. Because when people like sort of told you something and that yeah. feels good, but there's more. There's such strength in vulnerability and there's such reward in getting yeah. vulnerability. And not to say like, sick, we cried, like, great, got the shot. Yeah. It wasn't about that, it was about yeah. being able to expose something. And yeah, as I said earlier, it costs a little bit. Mm. And it's, it, you know, it's- Because you don't want to go too dark. <laughs> no, <laughs> like, it's like, like, yeah. Exactly. Like, yeah. I, I had people, I had a, a, a guy from primary school who mm. I haven't seen in you know 15 years maybe yeah. and he contacted me and it's just like you put yourself in this vulnerable position but god it's rewarding when people who once knew a version of you yeah reach out and say this really had an impact or yeah. it, it there's such reward in, in showing vulnerability um even if it is a bit terrifying it, yeah and I think one of the biggest things for me is actually when you guys share the images and I read the support messages you guys are getting mm. and it's like you've done a lot in your careers mm. but there's something about these images and that's not that's by us both yeah. from, from my eye and what you guys are portraying but it's really affecting people yeah. like I think it's it's I don't know what it is but it's something that it resonates like I we know, know the exactly government do is. projects and campaigns but I just don't think they don't relate to the as much I don't think I think real people with this is the thing that mm -hmm. we have always, we spoke mm -hmm. about on today's show. Like yeah. We are so used to seeing these glorified versions of everyone's life. And we all yeah. do it, not yeah. just people who are, yeah. you know, not yeah. celebrities.